Well, good morning, Emmanuel. It's um, good to be with you this morning. Feels like I've been on lockdown for um, far too long, uh, but I've enjoyed the services and I've enjoyed the preachers and I've enjoyed the worship and the ministry in our online church. So I'm glad to be back with you this morning. Must admit, I'd like to be with you and hug you and see you face to face. But until that time, at least we can be together in this digital way. So, yeah, this morning I just want to bring something to you that has been really on my heart over these last few months during this season. And uh, I want to read to you a few verses from the Psalms, and it's Psalm 97. And I'm going to read from verse 1 through to 6, and then verse 9. It says, The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the peoples see his glory. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Amen. Scripture says there, the Lord reigns. The Bible tells us that he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. And if we really believe this, then this is going to affect the whole of our lives. This is going to affect how we face every situation. And if we really believe this, it says that whatever is happening in the world in which we live, God is in control. God is still in control. And I want to say to you this morning, this is the heart of the teaching of the Bible this is the heart of our theology. This is the base of our confidence that whatever goes on in the world, whatever circumstances we face, God is in control. He is in charge. He reigns in the heavens and he is the Lord over all other gods. You see, we can miss the blessing of God by 18 inches. We can miss the power of God by 18 inches. It means we can believe something in our head, but it's not gone into our heart. And it's at times of difficulty, times of stress, times of challenge, when what is in our heart is what we live by. And we need to believe in our heart that God is in control, whatever circumstances come our way. Most of you know that I enjoy being a grandfather and uh, taking my grandson down to the pond in Blackheath with his little uh, remote control boat. And he's seven years of age and he can guide this boat all the way around with his fingers. It goes forwards, it goes backwards, it comes this way, it comes, whatever he does, <laughs> it does it. And if a seven year old boy can do that with a minimum of technology, how much more? Can God control things in our world and in our lives? 1997, the spacecraft Pathfinder went to Mars. And one of the things they were planning was that a little buggy called Sojourner would uh, leave the spacecraft and go onto the planet. And that little buggy would be controlled 500 million kilometers away by somebody in a computer in an office. And I want to say to you today, if man can do that, how much more can God be in control of the events and the circumstances in our lives? So my message today really is that inner confidence, hold on to it, never let it go, that God always has been, he always is, 
and he always will be in control. That's why we can say that all things work together for good to them that love God. Because God truly is in control. I think perhaps we feel sometimes the world we live in is out of control. With tension between na- na- nations and with difficulties that are going on with Brexit and financial difficulties and COVID-19 and so many different things. Is our world out of control? Well, it does feel like it, but I want to tell you God is still in control. Even in our own lives, sometimes it feels like things are out of control with our finance or our relationships or our health or our ministry, whatever. But we have to hold on to the fact deep within our beings that whatever our God is still in control. He is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. He's omniscient. That means he knows everything. He's omnipotent. That means he has all power. That means God can be and is in control. Jeremiah puts it a different way. He says, Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched harm. Nothing is too hard for you. Jeremiah picks up this word sovereign. Not only is he the Lord that reigns, but he reminds us that this Lord that reigns is sovereign over everything. And that means then, as we look through the scriptures, God has a sovereign plan for our lives, for your life and for my life. You know the verse of scripture in Jeremiah that very simply says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to build you up and not destroy you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And beloved, this morning we need to understand God has a sovereign plan for our hearts and for our lives. And he will keep to that plan as long as we follow him and as long as we are close to him and as long as we do his will and his plan and his purpose. I read about a guy who was on a scaffold in about a hundred feet from the ground and he slipped and fell. And uh, he fell a hundred feet, landing on his face in the dirt, narrowly missing some bricks and some rubble. And amazingly, he was relatively unhurt. But anyway, they picked him up by the paramedics to take him off to hospital to check him out. While he's being carried on the stretcher, he said to them, Hey guys, make sure you don't drop me. Apparently, the hundred-foot fall had not taken away his sense of humour. I just want to say to you today, God has a plan for your life, and he will not drop you. He is the one who's in control. He is the Lord of all the earth. He is the sovereign over all creation. He will not drop you. He will not let you down. You have to have this embedded in your life, in your heart, in your experience, That God is in control and he will bring you through and he will bring blessing into your lives. It is true that even though God has a sovereign plan, sometimes people resist that plan. I remember when Jesus stood on the southeastern slopes of the Mount of Olives and he looked over Jerusalem and he said, Oh Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you as a hen gathers its chicks. But you would not. Sometimes people resist God's plan for their lives. Certainly the world at large is resisting God's plan for their lives. But it doesn't change the plan. Because God still has a plan and will fulfill his plan. (laughs) Sometimes we don't really want God's plan for our lives. We think we have something different. We like to live our lives differently. (laughs) I remember in my own life, kneeling at the front of church one, one Sunday morning and giving my life to the Lord afresh and responding to an altar call and kneeling down at the altar and saying, Dear Lord, you can do whatever you want with my life. I'll go anywhere for you. Just don't ask me to be a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor. 
See, my dad was a pastor and I saw the stresses and all the kind of things he went through with his life. And I thought, you know what, I'm not sure I want this. I want to serve the Lord, but that's not for me. In fact, a missionary came round to our house one day from um, South Africa and he had a big printing press out there. And he said, you know, Steve, I'm looking for people who trained in the print industry to come and work with me in South Africa to prepare gospel literature to go out to the nations of Africa. You know, something sparked inside of me and I thought, wow, yeah, that sounds really exciting. Lord, how about me going to South Africa? And it took a while to work it through, but in the end, God said to me, no, I want you to be a pastor. And so for the last 50 years, I've been a pastor. And you know what I found out? I found out that God's will for my life, God's plan for my life, is the best plan ever. I do remember the words of a hymn a long while ago. It says, you choose the path for me, although I may not see the reason you desire to lead me so. And, and I just want you to be comfortable and secure that God has a plan for your life. It's his sovereign plan. You just open up your heart to the Lord and allow him to have his way in your life and you will live the best life that you could ever live. Sometimes God's plan will take us through difficult times. It won't always be easy. Sometimes it will be rough. You know, there's a, a project in Cornwall and it's called the Eden Project. And it's a series of massive biomes that have created a perfect environment for trees and for shrubs to live and survive with, with no predators, with no bugs to destroy and the perfect atmosphere, the perfect humidity. And, and, and it created an ideal circumstance for the shrubbery, the trees and the plants to actually live in. But after, after some while, they noticed that the branches and the leaves of the trees were wilting and, and, and folding down. And they couldn't understand because this was a perfect environment. So they called in a tree expert and the tree expert came in and said, the problem is that it's the wind blowing that pushes the leaves to and fro and bends the branches that forces the nutrients to come from the, root, the roots and make the vegetation and the trees strong. Uh, and the weakness here is because there's no stress on the trees. And you know, we want to live our lives in a perfect Eden, in a perfect environment. But in this world and, and in this season, that will not serve us well. It's the stresses, it's the pressures, it's the problems, it's the challenges. It's the things that drive us to our knees to call on the Lord and say, God, what are you doing here? God, why are you doing this in my life? That causes us to, 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 to call on our resources and call on the depths of our faith and be renewed and restrengthened and empowered to become the people that God wants us to be. We're not meant in this world to live in a perfect environment. But God's sovereign plan for our lives will sometimes take us through difficult circumstances. And doesn't the Bible say the trial of our faith, which is much more precious than gold, even though it is tried by fire, will bring the best reward in our hearts and in our lives. I just pray that God will help us to understand he has a sovereign plan for our lives. And even though it's not easy, God is still in control. He's still leading and he's still taking us through his purposes. Secondly, I just simply want to say to you that God has a sovereign love. Not a love that is based on what we do. This is a sovereign love that is based on who God is. You know the scripture that God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We know John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
That's a sovereign love. That's the love of God. That comes from the heart of God, not based on what we are, but based on what God is. It's a sovereign love. One of the most empowering things in our lives to know that the plan that God has for our lives come out of his love for us. It comes out of that unconditional love. You know, I kind of grew up in a Pentecostal home and uh, quite a strict conservative upbringing. Uh, and um, it was godly, it was righteous, it was passionate. My father was a pastor and he was passionate in everything he did for God. In fact, he was 150% for God. But in all of that, I still kind of grew up with this feeling that I had to earn God's love. And uh, I remember picking up the phrase along the way, Jesus won't love you if you do that. And somehow I believe that I had to earn God's love. And maybe you feel sometimes that you have to earn God's love. That if you do the right things, you are loved by God. If you don't do the right things, he will cast you aside. I want to tell you God's love is sovereign. He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you with an unchanging love. And one of the things you need to hold on to deep within your spirit is his love never changes. For God so loved the world. Here in his love, not that we love him, but that he first loved us and gave himself for us. To be the propitiation for our sins. I want to say what changed my life was the realisation that God's love is unconditional. And I live every day of my life in the confidence that God's plan for my life comes out of his unconditional love for me. For Stephen Page, God loves me with an everlasting love, as Jeremiah 33 reminds us. And sometimes even the things that are not quite so good come out of God's love for us. I remember reading of a, a fishing fleet that had gone out to sea from uh, the coast of Scotland. And while they were out at sea, uh, a dreadful storm came along. And uh, the families and the friends and the sweethearts of the fishermen that were out at sea were very, very anxious that the fishing fleet would not make it back into harbour because the storm was so severe. And the fleet were already many hours late. They were due in and they were so late. Added to that one dear lady, unfortunately, her house caught fire. And while all of this was happening, the house burned to the ground and they lost everything that was in the house, though nobody was harmed. By some miracle, the fleet made it to harbour and was safely in harbour. And everybody was rejoicing and giving thanks that the fleet had returned home safely. <laughs> One lady had to say to her husband, I'm so sorry to have to say, we have lost everything. Our house and everything we had is burned to the ground. And the husband stopped for a moment. He said, my dear, don't worry. He said, it was that fire that guided us back into the harbour. But for that fire, we would all have been lost at sea. And sometimes even the negative things happen in our lives. And we can't see why they're happening. We just need to understand that even in that, God loves us. And he has a plan to bring out his purposes and his grace in our lives. This is all based on God's sovereign love for each one of us. And I pray that you and I will know God has a sovereign plan for our lives. It comes out of his sovereign love for our hearts and our lives. That's why we trust in him. Doesn't the scripture say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. 
in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Why will he do that? Because out of his sovereign love he directs us and speaks into our lives. I remember reading these verses some while ago and just having that revelation that if I ask God to direct my life and if I trust in him why would he not do what he says and guide me and lead me into his plan and his perfect place for my life? He will. That's exactly what he will do. We can be confident in that. I read about a man who was being taken to London to be tried for heresy. And in those days, to be tried for heresy was to be burned at the stake. His name was Bernard Gilpin. And on the way, he had said to his friends and people around that his favourite saying was simply, all things work together for good to them that love God. Believe it or not, on the way he tripped from the car, broke his leg and had to be put aside for a few days while his leg healed before he could actually make the journey to London to be tried, where he would almost certainly have been burned at the stake. But those few days were all that were necessary for Queen Mary died and uh, somebody else took over and he no longer had to go to London and he went home in triumph. You see, even the difficult things very often work in our favour if we trust on him with all of our heart because he has a sovereign plan and that plan works out of his sovereign love for our hearts and our lives. The last thing I want to say to you today is that God's sovereign plan and his sovereign love are backed by his sovereign power. Jesus said, all authority is given unto me, all power is given unto me. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. All power. Just another reminder of the sovereignty of our God and the sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sovereignty means dominion, it means rule, it means that God is in control. He always has been, he is now, and he always will be in control. You know, if I don't believe that God is in control, I'm not in keeping with the teaching of Scripture, because the teaching of Scripture tells me that the Lord reigns. It tells me that he is the sovereign Lord, that he's the creator of the heaven and earth, that he has a plan for my life and his love for my life will bring that plan into purpose. And he has the power to back it up. And if I can't believe that, then I'm not in keeping with the scriptures. And we want to base our lives on the word of God. We want to base our life on the scriptures. So what does the Bible teach us? It teaches us that he is sovereign over creation. Psalm 8 says, when I consider the work of your hands, the stars, the moon, the planets, the creation of this world. We see in the life of Jesus that he was sovereign over nature because they said even the storms obey him. We see from the scripture that Jesus was sovereign over sickness. Sometimes he healed them all. Sometimes a leper, sometimes it was a blind man, sometimes it was a child, sometimes he raised from the dead. But he is sovereign over sickness. The Bible reminds us that he is sovereign over demonic powers because even the demons asked him to be put into the swine rather than to be cast out. He's sovereign even over the demons. And he's sovereign over history. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and he is the end. He is the first and he is the last. He is the one who was and who is and who is to come. Beloved, today he is the sovereign one. He is the one who is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. He's all power. And my message to you today is that God always has been and always will be in control. So let me leave you with these words of comfort today. 
that he's the sovereign Lord, sovereign over creation. He is in control of your life. Whatever the circumstances of our world, whatever the challenges we face, he is in control. And the deeper I can believe that within my spirit, the stronger I will be when facing different situations, different challenges and different difficulties in my heart and in my life. The Bible says, the Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. The Lord reigns. Let Emmanuel rejoice. The Lord reigns. Let our families rejoice. The Lord reigns. Let the church rejoice because God is in control. Just this week I was talking to an elderly Christian lady, 92 years of age. One of the sweetest, most godly ladies I have ever met. Our conversations are always so precious, always so lovely. And um, at the end of it, she asked me to pray and she prayed. And I was actually due to go into a Zoom meeting with a staff meeting at the church and um, she prayed for quite a long time, so I was a bit late for the meeting. But a lovely, lovely, godly lady. She said to me, do you remember the song that we used to sing? And these are the words, God is still on the throne and he will remember his own. Though trials may press us and burdens distress us, he never will leave us alone because God is still on the throne. And I want to say to you, the Lord reigns. God is still on the throne. God is still in control. Let's be comforted. Let's be strengthened. Let's be blessed. Let's be inspired by these wonderful truths. God bless you. Well, church, that was a great word. What a wonderful word um, we, we just heard there. I pray that as you heard that word, it's, done, and it's made an impact in your life today. So thank you for allowing Emmanuel Church to be in your front room today. So I'd like to say, um, at the end of this service, there's, um, if you said yes, there's a, uh, if you visit our website, you'll see a button that says, I said yes. Click on that button and someone will be in, co will be in contact with you. After this service, you can join our um, pastor Nick and Debbie in their um, cafe church. So the details should really come up afterwards. So you can click on and just have some time of fellowship with our um, senior pastor and with Debbie. Please don't forget to join our Life Connect groups. It's really important that at this time that we really can't meet together, but it's important that you do meet with you do meet with someone in our Life Connect and just have that fellowship together. So although we're not meeting here physically, but you can speak to someone in a Life Connect, you can do something on Zoom, WhatsApp, whatever it may be, it's important that we just have time together with one another. So please do get in contact. Please do join a Life, group, uh, a life Connect group and all the information is on our website. So I'll say to you this time, stay blessed, God bless, bye.